just say one, two, three. Test. Uh, we started. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't give the countdown. Uh, hi. So we're here. Um, I guess the first order of business is adding some icebreakers here. Um, yeah, let's do that. We'll end the audio <laughs> test. Um, order means Zemo. One. Two. Three. Four. Okay. Five. Six. Mm. Okay. I was listening to the audio and it was pretty uh, confusing to uh, hear. The, okay. Like, which number should I say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. There's some icebreakers. Yeah. So, what can we. So, one question I would have for our audience is that have you used, uh, used an HPC system before, mm -hmm. uh, like a computational cluster? Yeah. And let's say we have questions of uh, never yeah. uh, or occasionally. Yeah. And then. What about one? Um... And something completely fun. I always remember in this question, what was your favorite fruit? And that got some of the best response from anything. Be what's your favorite ice cream flavor? In honor of the weather the last mm. few days. That's a good question. I would say like maybe like an old timey strawberry. And with with like some mm -hmm. like jam inside of it or something like that. That's yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. What's yours? Oh, that's a good question. There's this um mito flavor from Suman Yatalotetas. That's pretty good. Mm. Yeah. So for the how long do you use computers? One of my interesting questions there like how did you get started and what did it mean to you like when i was growing up there were computers in our home and i mean i guess my parents had one of course this was in the 90s or something like that so it wasn't really a powerful commonly used thing but i didn't really like have a feeling that this is a thing that i could learn about and know about until maybe my last year of high school, something like that. And then I got one that I could mess with just for myself. And then I could start, you know, breaking things. And then when you break stuff, you really understand it. So I wonder how did this progression go for other people? Like for you, Simo, what was your starting point of? Um, yeah, I would say that the, the starting point was when my father bought like a second second hand computer from his work that his coworker had preloaded with some shareware games or something like that, mm -hmm. like DOS games. Yeah, it was Windows ninety five computer, but, mm -hmm. but like, uh, uh, yeah, I would say that like trying to even get those to work was was an effort in and of itself like <laughs> yeah. like old shareware games so mm -hmm. uh, yeah that was basically like you you immediately start start to do problem solving because you want to play the games and the games don't work so yeah yeah okay so basically games is seems to be the way that people start with computers do we need some hpc games that people can play and get familiar familiar with things and so on. 
like I would say that why people start like like I I tried my um I learned my parents like 486 as well with MS DOS, mm -hmm. but like what can I do with that? I can use a matrix printer and write some text, but if I'm like a I don't know like six years old or something, yeah. like what does a six year old need a matrix printer for? <laughs> like it's yeah like the games are much more like uh, suitable I would say uh, because like. Or like if you only have like a productivity computer, it's not that uh, fun. Yeah. But eventually, yeah. of course, the productivity can get fun as well. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Does anyone want to hear what happened yesterday with the stream going down? And some more stories behind that. Go right ahead. Uh, yeah. So, so in my home a few weeks ago, I got these messages saying electricity meters will be replaced in your building sometime in the next few weeks. But you'll get a text message a day or two before that happens, so you have some warning. So I worried. Ah, uh, okay. This is gonna be bad because it's right during the Kickstart course time. But I haven't gotten a message about it yet, so. You know, I've just ignored it. But, of course, whenever they're replacing the meter of the common telco equipment in the building, I guess I wouldn't get notified. So my hypothesis is that yesterday they did that. So I lost my connection for 15 minutes or so. Incidentally, like they said yesterday, it was right at the same time before the same talk that was interrupted by the Fastly CDN breaking several years ago. So then I, so first I was hoping it would come back soon. It happened towards the beginning of this long break. But then, um, when it was getting closer and closer to time, I switched my laptop tethered to my mobile device, which incidentally my mobile operator had some problems with their network, their mobile network earlier in the day. And luckily they weren't right at the same time because then I would have had zero connection to the outside world at all. And that would be pretty funny. Um, yeah, and all of the fancy production tricks that you might see during the streams, Richard <laughs> is basically the, the person behind all of these. So, yeah. so we would have been uh, in a creek without a paddle. <laughs> if, yeah. If, Richard's yeah. internet didn't come back. Yeah. And then you saw me dynamically adjusting stuff, trying to recover. So that was kind of fun. Anyway, yeah. But it did show me that it actually wasn't that hard. My laptop could handle it with the outside screen. And if I just had a little bit more preparation, then it would have been much easier. Um. The hardest part is that I couldn't copy stuff by SSH from my desktop to my laptop because there was no network and I didn't really know what to do about that problem. Anyway, so it's almost time. Um, let's review what we've got here for our answers. So most people haven't used clusters that much. Please do go and open up the notes and answer these. So this is really important for us to see the interaction and know how many people are, are around. Yeah, and also like like usually like we have so many people watching this or hopefully we have a lot of people watching this but uh when we have a lot of people watching if you encounter something during the the talks that like was brushed too too fast or something like that uh that's something that was something that was unclear for you like using the notes is the best way to like make us notice that and then we can elaborate on the answers that we're giving so so because like Today we are going, well, Richard will talk a bit more what we're going to be going through today, but there's going to be this kind of like, we're building on a foundation type of a thing where we mm -hmm. built upon the previous things. 
So if something gets lost in translation or something, mm -hmm. then uh, it's it's like it's basically like the foundation uh, is is cracked. So so it's it's good good to fix immediately so that we we know how to like build upon on the information that we have given. So yeah. so use the notes a lot. Let us know about any questions that you have. Yeah. Ask a lot of questions that there's other people answering as well. Because it really, really helps uh, us and it helps you. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. I will switch to my screen here, I hope. 